Thank you. Well, that's probably the only applause I get tonight. Uh, wait until done with the talk. <laughs> so, defending the poor um, is, and I'm saying that right away because um, I've heard a couple of complaints by other people saying that security talks are always like drama. Um, they're building up and then you actually have to sit through them to actually get the exploit. So since this is a defense talk, we can break with this tra um, tradition. And so the purpose of this presentation is actually to discuss um, how to counter attacks based on rich internet applications in the example of um, the Adobe Flash runtime. Um, and well, in short, this is not about Cisco. <laughs> so um, since I'm doing that the first time, I have to put in a disclaimer. Defense is new to me. as some of you probably know. Um, and I'm not a Flash developer, um, which might not come in surprising. And I totally appreciate feedback about the work and everything, um, including feedback that says I should shut the fuck up and like give the slots to other people. So what are we talking about? Like, we're talking about what's the motivation behind this research. So this is why I couldn't give it away um, before. <laughs> It's part of the slides. Wouldn't fuck up my drama. Um, we're talking a little bit about like RIA basics and stuff, um, how flash security works, um, what flash malware types we're seeing. Uh, we're going to talk about the flash internals. That's the fun part. Um, then we will talk about the defense approach. We um, came up with how we implemented it, uh, what works, what doesn't work. Um, this, this is actually code being developed, so of course it is not at the stage that I wanted it to be for today. Um, and what we're going to do next. So what's the, the motivation behind this? So in late 2008, um, the German Federal Office for Information Security, or as we all know it, the BSI, actually initiated a project on um, researching the, the current state of security in rich internet applications. And given this audience, I would like to say one thing. Um, we do all enjoy bashing the BSI and other government institutions, but um, you should not forget that Germany is one of the very few countries that actually has a government institution whose partial purpose is to make sure that the citizens and their computers are protected. All the other government institutions that we have in the world actually care about government systems and military systems and police systems. We actually have a quite capable group of people that cares about the general public. And we should occasionally consider helping them in their cause. So as I said, it was um, a review of RIA architectures and security, and Adobe Flash turned actually out to be a whole can of worms, and certainly behind the curve in terms of security compared to everyone else. Um, which of course posed the question, can we actually fix this, preferably without firing anyone at Adobe? Um, so this is where it came from. Now the question obviously is who cares about flash security? Um, one group of people is, well, the Apple users care about security at all? Let's assume they do. Um, so one of them is actually Apple users still running PowerPC machines because PowerPC is not going to get any security patches anymore. Um, the second group which I belong to is people who don't like to get owned just because they serve porn. Porn actually comes in a lot of flash players, and we actually want it to, you know, show the images, um, transport the audio, which is not very interesting, but part of the show. Um, <laughs> and still don't find new EXE files on our Windows machine after we did so. The other group is less obvious. The other group is website operators, primarily people that actually get advertisement banners from other people, because those tend to be in flash. And the problem, of course, is if you get fed parts of your website that you're including that are not yours, um, you might actually be in for a couple of surprises, as Heise, eWeek, and other large online sites should. Also, if you just own a website that allows people to upload stuff, 
you could potentially be held liable for the Swift files that people find on your website that do strange things to their computers. So, rich internet applications, what is it? So, essentially, um, it's, in general, it's a programmatic way of enhancing your regular web browser with more interaction, uh, media, display, um, you know, linking. Um, the prominent members here is um, the one with the F for fail, um, <laughs> then um, Microsoft Civilite and the Moonlight implementation, and Java, the, the, they violated a the trademark there. <laughs> so what's common about them? Um, commonly, um, the, the RIA functionality is implemented as a plugin. So the plugin provides an actual runtime for the specific RIA content. So you're thinking virtual machines. Um, the RIA runtime additionally provides like media playback and other stuff. Um, the applications in all three cases are, um, or the RIA files are actually distributed as a um, combined set of data for media, um, of code, of images, everything in one file. Um, and the, the runtimes actually um, run those files and then provide additional services that the browser actually intentionally didn't provide, which is independent local storage and independent network communication and all the things that your browser is not supposed to do. Um, in real applications are supposedly portable between operating systems as long as you have a runtime. So it is a plugin for most browsers. However, the, the runtime itself is relatively independent from the browser. So the runtime is usually implemented in an ActiveX or other type of DL. And then um, the browser only has a little bit of glue code. And the only dependence really being the JavaScript, the DOM, and everything else. Um, the activation of that functionality obviously is by embedding um, some type of real content in your web page. And then the browser will know, hey, I, I have a plugin for this. So I'm going to fire it up and run. How are they distributed? Um, the, the, the short sum of it is every fucking computer runs Flash, <laughs> except for a couple that weren't detected. Um, Civilite and um, Java actually plays a bigger role. Um, Civilite actually doesn't play a big role so far. So what's the security model of Flash? Um, primarily, it, it relies on the idea that it has code that runs in a virtual machine, and then the virtual machine actually makes sure that nothing gets out into the native system. Um, however, um, they also need to make uh, decisions on what to do with um, data. So they have this concept of called sandboxes. So in principle, you can either live in the local or in the remote sandbox. If you live in a remote sandbox, you can talk to the network, but not to the file system. If you live in a local one, vice versa. The remote one roughly implements the same origin policy. It's commonly said it is the same origin policy, but if it were, I wouldn't stand up here. Um, the flash code itself, for example, for saying what can access my flash cookies, the flash code itself can say, dear runtime, um, I would like to soften my same origin policy. I would like to give access to the domain star um, to that cookie I'm writing, which obviously gives access to everything. Um, the website that the, the flash file actually came from can also soften all those limitations by placing a policy file within the same web server saying this Flash application can talk wherever it wants, as if the website is the one that should decide that. Um, so you can actually pass additional parameters to it in the embed text saying, well, it's fine for scripting or it's not. Um, to the user, this actually plays um, as very limited settings. So the user actually has very limited things to do. There is a setting dialog, which is an actual Flash application on Macromedia's website. What you actually have in terms of controls, and there are quite some, is hidden somewhere in the developer specification. Um